there's a never time to be bored right now. Like we always have so many things to do. We both have to-do lists. There's always constant work that could be done. And I know maybe you're in college and you're like, well, I could get that project done. Maybe you have a job right now. You also have a side hustle. Maybe you, you know, everyone has this constant list of things. And being bored is so rare these days. You don't have time to like think, what do I like? What don't I like? Do I feel like drawing? Like, should I journal? Like, what would you do if you literally didn't have your career? Hey. Okay, my little rock star. Wait. Okay. <laughs> We're nervous. Hey, I'm her. No, no. You guys need to look at where Sid is right now. Stand. Are you standing? I'm standing right now. It feels weird. <laughs> oh my God. I, She's have to, I need to put my headphones on like quiet because it's too much, too much like commotion. <sighs> I've never talked without like like into a mic like this without like headphones on. So I'm like, oh, I'm so excited because you're standing up. So you look like you're literally like at a rap studio and you're going to be able to use both hands as your mannerisms instead of just one. So I'm so excited to see you just yes. flail, flail about. I'm freaking hyped because this is like, I'm just excited that we're recording again. Like I'm hyped up that we're recording again. It feels uh, like we're back at home. Besides the fact, I'm going to be honest, this is so weird. Like sitting on this couch by myself, I feel a little awkward. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm ready. And you know, when you just feel energized and you're like ready to have a good episode, that's how I feel today. But it's just weird without you yeah. here. So I'm excited for you to come back. So can you tell the people I know. when are you coming back? A long awaited, let me just make sure that my camera is 100% rolling because I just get a little nervy. Hold yeah. up, please. Yeah. I'm going over here. You just go. give me a sec. I just gonna, get nervous. I'm let like, me make sure everything. check. I'm going to have you check in the middle of the episode too and make sure it's rolling. She's checking. I also just wanted to charge my phone too because like then it's recharging and my camera's going, you guys, there's a lot of things that you have to set up that you don't really realize when you're doing this, but I'm coming back in a week. So I will be back in Minnesota a few days after you hear this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. A few days after you hear this. So I'll be back in a week, you guys. Oh I'm coming God. back. Yay. I know. Finally. It's, I'm, you know, it was a month of being here. Well, it was supposed to be a month of being here. The problem was I had work that was like, nope, you're going to go to New York for a week. So it took away a week of San Diego, which I was bummed about, by the way. Sorry about my list right now. I think I need to take out my retainers. Um, <laughs> I'm literally listening. Can you hear it? No. Or is it just in my head? I didn't hear it. No. I think you, I'm like, you'll I get like used to it. Just years. keep it going. I know. True. But I got to go to New York for a week and ended up being like one of the best work trips I've ever done in my whole entire life. But I will say that pulling a week away from what was supposed to be your really intentional travel time is really yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not bummed about it because it ended up working out for a lot of different reasons. And it was a trip that changed, probably changed the way like my career is going to go which is pretty crazy. Um, but I'll, t I'll get into that in a second, but truly getting outside of your comfort zone. And we'll talk about this, this episode, but like going and doing something that you said you were going to do for a really, really long time and being afraid of what could happen to Jordan and I, if I leave, like what's going to happen to my friendships, what happens to my routine. I love lifting. I love like going anywhere and knowing everybody. And, um, even the growth that you can get from, a month away is pretty insane. That's what I'll, that, I'll leave it at that until we actually like go into our topic. But one week until I come home, people. One week. I absolutely love that. I'm so happy you were able to take the time to do that because yeah, you've been talking about it forever and you were like, I think I need to move. But really, you just needed to get like a taste of what it was yeah. like to be there and like knowing that it's always going to be there. You can travel, you can have a home and still enjoy, you know, a, a little vacation maybe by yourself or with with your with your boo thing um but yeah oh, I'm happy for yeah. you I'm glad thank you babies and I miss you and I'm ready to come back and obviously we there's no um secret that we've been on a little bit of a hiatus which to be honest I feel like sitting where we are now versus the last time we recorded when we were telling everybody we were going on a hiatus is like a yeah. world of a difference of just the energy that we have and how we feel and like I know I'm speaking oh God, for both yeah. of us just because we've talked about it, but like, I just feel so fucking hyped up to do this shit now. And like, we just needed a little break. I mean, two and a half years of grinding, like it's a fuck ton. Like it's a lot. Sorry yeah. for the F-bombs, but I'm um, sorry, not sorry. Uh, but we need the break. And now it's like you come back, sometimes stepping away from your baby and like letting go for a second 
actually going to open up so many more doors once you yeah. like come back. That's exactly what I was just going to say. So while Sid was, you know, in Cali doing her thing, like this break has also meant a lot to me. Um, and I was like, maybe we should talk about mental health again. I'm like, no, we fucking talk about this every fucking episode, but it's just I such know. a big part of, it is a big part of my life and like something I really do struggle with. And I think this past, I would say two weeks, I think we had like two, I had two weeks where it was fully like, I was able to step back from it, you know, and like really be with myself, think about my inner thoughts and like reflect and fix my mental health. Honestly, like I had a few psychiatry appointments. I had some therapy sessions and like, I really needed like, like a rebirth of a little of, in a sense, like, um, I up my anxiety medications. I, um, turned into definitely more than just my anxiety. Like dark holes for me have become more dark every time they hit. I get these waves of like dark holes and each time it seems to get darker and deeper. And um, I get out of it usually, but I'm like, I can't keep doing this because it affects more than just me. Like it's affecting the people around me. It's affecting the way I show up in my day to day. It's affecting the way I show up in my job, you know, my podcast and my, with my clients and like with my relationships. So like, this is something I really did need to like, take a moment to figure out and part of that being yeah I did up my medication and it is the craziest thing that has happened like I feel I don't know how to explain it but it's and I know I don't want to push like medication on people if that's not what you need and I'm trying to work on my behaviors and like figure out how to rethink and you know rewire my brain at the same time but I need help along the way especially in my 20s when there's so many things up in the air you know finances are a big stress for me you know then I have a couple jobs we're burnt out we're busy and being able to like feel happy again and like find a sense of yourself again and it's like, wow, wh what did you do the past two weeks? But I literally, that is how I feel. Like, so I'm excited. I'm really fucking excited. I'm freaking proud of you too for like, I don't know. It's, it's amazing that you can go through bumps and ups and downs and things where you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Or like, I don't know what's my calling anymore. Like, what am I even doing? Yeah. And you can take a step back, listen to your mental health for God's sakes, because we need to, and we, we have to do that and realign yourself. Like I was like, the most important thing to me about this podcast is the impact it has on other people. I'm already using my hands because I'm not holding a mic. Can you notice? Like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> and that means something to me. Like that fills my fucking cup. And when I sit back and think about why I was getting so stressed, I was prioritizing things that weren't important. Like the website or the, like, I don't know, like a, a I don't know, thumbnail. Let's just use that mm -hmm. as an example versus the content that we put out there to make people feel like they're heard, understood. That's the whole point of Straight Candid is you talk about shit that people aren't, you know, comfortable talking about. Like we are real. We tell you how it is. If we're doing something wacky, we'll be honest. We'll say when we're wrong. And that is everything to me. Like that's something that we built and I didn't want any of that to go away. And yeah. um, I also had heard a stat. I sent it to Soph because I was like, holy shit, 80% of podcasts that were out there in 2020 are dead. That means only 20% are left. And if you're here right now in the podcast space, like doing something, that means something. So uh, it was if just you're even listening, more of like a fire like, lit under my ass. And yes, you're listening. And if yes, you're listening, yeah, that yeah. does mean a lot to us. So to keep this up, like we say it every, every episode, but leaving a rating, review, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, it does help us keep going. So if you haven't, please do that. Um, and we appreciate it. But I think, so because really we do. talked about kind of the sense of self, like whether that be traveling or me focusing kind of on my mental health this past month, um, we're going to kind of talk about like the art of being alone, but not lonely. But before we really dive into that, I think we got to kind of lighten the mood a little bit, little straight candid moments. Yes, please. Yes, please. This is weird because we're used to like being next to each other but I'm like waiting leaving space because we're on the camera I don't know it's weird do you want to go first yeah I can go first okay um it. I actually had one happen yesterday and I know we said like no more poop stories but like this is quick and this is not what you think it is I promise uh, we didn't I say promise, that I promise. We never said that. But you know what like, I realized? Mm, we what? need to update our description because we don't have anything about poop in it. And like, that's a huge oh. part of our lives. So yeah, we definitely need to do that. 
Um, okay, really quick. This is, I was just like, what the hell? So Jordan came to town this past like two days and he's already gone today, which I'm like, oh, I'm so sad. But it's okay because he left because he was like, you know, uh, my friend just told me, Michaela was like, why aren't you staying like all through the weekend, Jordan? And he's like, oh, because this is Sydney's trip. Like, I'm not going to intrude on that time that she had intentionally set to like go do something for herself. I'm like, first of all, find yourself a man that's like that. Thank you. Second of all, um, we obviously got a little frisky because it had been a few weeks, two weeks to be exact. I was not counting the days or the hours or anything. Um, and I'm like unpacking, trying to find my pajamas. Okay. So like had a wonderful evening, whatever. And I bend over and I'm looking through my suitcase and I smell something literally horrific, like horrific. I thought it was coming from my undercarriage. I thought for sure that I have a disease literally happening live and <laughs> as we speak that I hadn't noticed. I was like, okay. So I'm Is this before I'm like, after sniffing. you before after after. Okay. Oh, you're like, oh god. So it was even more like holy crap, oh like keep your freaking body like order to yourself. Anyway, I figured out finally, thank God it's not me. It's a shoe that I packed in my bag that had literally the most, I don't know if it was human poop or dog poop on the bottom of it. It was reeking my entire suitcase. Like literally as an OCD 101 person, hi, how are you? I don't think anything worse could have happened to me. I, but I'm just glad it wasn't my body order. Holy hell. Honestly. On my shoe, in my suitcase. Thank God you smelled it after you did the deed because if you would have smelled before, it probably would have thrown off the whole like sexual energy that was happening. Well, yeah. Oh I'm like, what my the God. I was literally just dis disgusted. I mean, like packed through clean items. You know how you like when you're packing, you pack like these are my clean clothes that I haven't worn yet. This is my dirty clothes. These are my like face products because like obviously Abby. it turns out no, I literally packed a poop shoe next to all my shit. Like, are you kidding me? God. God, I love how we're like no more poop stories, but we really just like always say them. Like I was just but about like, to mention before I got in here, I texted Ben and I was like, I think I just sharded my pants. Like I have to go to the bathroom oopsie. to check. <laughs> and he, I walk in. The first thing he says with his coworkers in the room, "Did you shart?" I'm like, Fuck. "Oh, nice." I like, I'm embarrassed, <laughs> but I literally share it to thousands of people every week. Anyways. You're sorry. I did sorry, it. Babe. I peeped, sorry, guys. So. Um, but speaking of poop and but buttholes, I'm glad um, I just have to say this. You know when you shave your butt, the hole, your hole of your butt? Um, I don't know. It's like itchy now. So that's all I had to Wait, say about that. What's what's itchy? <laughs> Wait, what? Like my booty hole, get, my booty hole gets itchy. When you shave it, well, are you like shaving after, it more it's like often? Trying to grow. Oh, I haven't shaved it in a year, and I decided I should get back there. And let me tell you, I'm glad I did. Holy crap! That All probably right. had a Straight little bit of a jungle moving back on. there. <laughs> you guys, this is so awkward because there's a delay, and I don't know what's happening. If she's reacting, I just feel so alone right now. I think your Wi-Fi just got kind of funky town. That's why I got full bars over here. I'm chilling on the four bar bars. Girl. Yeah. Girl, can you hear me? I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Um, straight kind of moment. Want to alternate? I have like two. How many do you have? Couple? I have two. I have two. You go ahead. Okay. My straight kind of moment. Well, I guess another update. I need to talk about the birth control update because people are always like, we want to hear the journey. So I'm still off birth control. This is about four months, maybe four and a half. Um, I feel pretty good, but I did up my anxiety med. Like I said, not sure if that's just like a winter low, what season I'm in, or if it's the birth, birth control, you can't really tell. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the update. I didn't really, I got my period, which is exciting. My full blown period after four months. Um, but then I didn't get it last month. So I'm like, am I pregnant or is this hormones? Not sure. Um, so that's kind of that update. And then speaking of my winter low, um, I've been having a lot of like heart to hearts with my boyfriend, Pat, and he's been really supportive through it all, like very comforting and making me feel, you know, as best as he can. It's just not fun to be around someone or feel like you're bringing someone else down all the time. So that's something I'm kind of dealing with right now. Um, but I was hugging him and like crying a little bit. And it was just one of those moments. It was a heart to heart. And he goes, Sophie. I just want to let you know, I have a boner, but it's not because you're sad. It's, 
It's because it's because we're hugging. Oh my god! And I'm literally like talking about my depression and like my deep thoughts and like these dark holes. And I'm hugging him and I'm crying and he's patting my head and he's like, "I'm so sorry, but I just want to let you know." (laughs) And I was like, "Really?" You're like, "What the frick, Pat?" Be better. This guy is the horniest man I've ever met. And I just like have not because of, I mean, those listening who have dealt with mental health, like issues, whatever, anxiety, depression, or on a bad day, like you, the last thing you feel like doing is getting frisky. So like, um, if I feel frisky, I literally have about 10 seconds to be like, I'm horny. Let's go. We have to go right now or it passes. Like I got 10 seconds. So Um, something weird that turned me on, which I have to tell you guys, because it was the strangest thing. What? I like haven't been very frisky. We're sitting there on our couch at home watching the first avatar because we're going to go see the second one later. And these avatars, okay, avatars, these blue little creatures, they don't even show anything, (laughs) like not even a nipple. And they're like straddling in the forest. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to have avatar sex. Like I just thought it was so cool about these creatures so then I was like, let's have sex. So we had sex. I got turned on by an avatar scene, okay? Um, no shame. And also with anxiety medications, your orgasms are decreased. Like the intensity of them aren't as strong, which kind of sucks. So I've been having to work at it a lot, which also takes a lot of work. Um, a lot of work. Yeah. And I know this is like very weird to talk about, but I know I'm not the only one who deals, deals with this when you're on um, SSRIs or any type of anxiety depression medication. So I've definitely been using vibrators a lot. Um, vibrator broke. It, it ran out of battery. And um, Pat got a new one for me. So shout out. I plus saw one. that on social media. What yeah, a cutie. You know. Are you kidding me? What I'm a freaking so thoughtful boy. And then um, the last little thing I wanted to share about this, like a sex excursion, avatar excursion. I think I was probably feeling <laughs> weird from one, the espresso martini I made, but two, the avatars, like being all like twisted up and windy. I did this sex position that I don't know how it happened or why we got into it. And I don't know if anyone else else has done it, but um, he was laying on his back and his knees were up. Okay. Like this. I'm like demoing for Sid. Okay. Yeah. But I was on top of him. Okay. But my back is on him. Okay. And I'm literally doing a bridge, a fucking bridge like this. Hold on. What What do you mean? He was on a, he was in a bridge and you were in a bridge? He was on his back like this. I'm literally demoing him. This is him on his back with his hips up. Okay. And then I'm on top with my hands like this. That sounds like a lot of fucking work. I don't know. We were laughing really hard, though. It was literally just fun. It wasn't actually enjoyable. I'm going to be honest. Here's a hot take, though. Like, actually having fun in the bedroom oh. is way more fun. Like, it's not serious. Yes. Like, if you make a queef or something awkward and you're like oh sorry oh, first of all don't apologize by the way no not necessary have it laugh a little bit it should be funny i laugh so hard when i queef it should be funny it's all funny it's like we don't need to be these serious beings you guys like just be natural like yes. and have a little fun with it like poke around and make fun of each other you can belly laugh in the bedroom like that's a good sign so love it yeah, okay i think I- i'm done <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you're hilarious. Finish your straight cannon moments. So this is the other one that I was going to talk about. And I actually now I'm a little bit like worried about my like health and I don't know what to do. So like need some feedback. And if you're out there and you listen to this and you hear this, like give me something via social media because like to straight cannon podcast on Instagram because I have no idea if I'm going to be okay. Okay, I'm nervous. Here we go. Uh, no, I think I did. I tell you, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know, know if I did. Oh, whatever. I'll tell you regardless. Okay. So we're at an Airbnb. I just left it like, and we have obviously like dishes that we're doing. And we also have like laundry and I could not find like any of the laundry detergent. So I'm like, I'm using the neighbor's stuff, which is like really not okay. But anyway, I left a note for them. I ended up buying her some more OxyClean. All is well in the world. I don't have a bad conscience. Okay. I'm doing the dishes for like the fourth time or so. And I had noticed my water bottle tastes a little funny, but like, whatever, it's not a big deal. Washing the dishes. And then it occurred to me that I think the Airbnb lady said that the dishwasher, or excuse me, the laundry detergent was under the sink. And I'm thinking to myself, under the sink, okay, there's, and then I open it up and like six are gone because we've done so many dishes. 
I realized that I was using laundry detergent pods to wash my dishes for two weeks. Laundry detergent in the dishwasher, washing my plates. Oh. Everything tasted like a cotton t-shirt with a little bit of Tide on it. Everything. <laughs> Like, and I was like, oh, oh, no wonder my water bottle tastes fucking weird. I've been slurping up laundry detergent. Do we not remember when the people at the Thai pods were running around eating them and then like eating people's faces and shit on the streets? Do we not remember this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. like, am I, am I okay? Like, I don't know. How do you feel? Okay. Like, am I going to be okay? I don't know. Are there voices in your head? Oh, so, yeah, but that's kind of like always. Like, I'm already a hypochondriac. Like, I can pretty much make myself believe that I'm, I am I have something wrong with me at any point in my day. <laughs> like, oh, what the hell? My gosh. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, I don't know. So sorry. <laughs> that's yeah, kind of well, funny, like, though. What the fuck? <laughs> I know. And I'm like, what the hell? Why would they put it underneath the sink? I don't know. I don't know. And they're unmarked and they're next to little pods yeah. that I'm sure go in the washing machine. Like, I'm confused. I would have done the same thing. I'm pretty sure that makes you like really sick. And I'm, I don't know. I don't feel normal. And I'm also like, holy shit. What if I'm like all, all of a sudden going to turn into like a creature and start running on my hands and knees? I don't know. <laughs> I bet. I bet you'll be okay because it wasn't directly. It's still like the dishwasher still did its thing, right? Like it got hot, cleaned it out. You got a little, maybe you got like a teeny teeny bit in your system well here's the thing is like there were literal suds in my water bottle like i was drinking the water and i realized it tasted funny but i was really thirsty oh. so i went to the sink and i poured it out and there were suds and, it, and suds came out so i if i'm not here in a week you guys it was really good knowing you i need to be a little bit more self-aware that's something i've learned i'm getting better um and if you see somebody on the news that's named sydney no you didn't no you didn't crawling on her hands and knees yeah, literally <laughs> at the stoplight. Right. Oh. Anyway, so that's my straight kid of moment update from San Diego. Also, just in general, the fact that I'm here and doing the thing is like a straight kid of moment because even though I've had so much faith in myself that I was going to go to California for so long, I actually didn't really have faith that I was going to do it because I have attachment issues, especially with Jordan in general. Like, I don't want to risk our relationship by leaving like that is not something that makes sense in my brain so for me to do this and have faith enough in our in our relationship that we're nothing's gonna happen like he's not gonna cheat on me while i'm gone i'm not gonna cheat on him while he's gone he's not gonna forget about me like i know it's all these stupid things but don't even pretend like you're sitting there right now in your head like i've had those haven't had those thoughts before if you're listening so um i fucking did it so that's all i gotta say about that mic drop mic drop and I know exactly, I mean, everyone has those thoughts. Like, it's just so funny. Like, I woke up this morning. I had a dream that Pat was moving to Wisconsin for his job. And it was, like, his excuse to kind of, like, slowly break up with me or something. And I woke up, and I was, like, so sad. And he was in the bed, and I yeah. remembered it was, was a dream. And, like, those dreams literally fucking shake you. I don't know. I just, oh my that's God, what they I do. It was horrible. I hate those dreams. Well, and <laughs> have you had the dreams where they cheat? Yeah. That and was like, like part of it. It was, don't fucking talk to me. Don't fucking talk to me. I'm like, you wake up and you're like, I'm confused. Is there something you need to tell me? <laughs> and they're like, no. And you're like, I don't know. You don't want, I don't want to talk to you today. I'm sorry. You're they're like giving like, them the fucking attitude. About? You're like, yeah. you're a bitch in my dream. Okay. So <laughs> that's that. You don't, so you're telling me you don't actually like Sarah from CBS? Okay. <laughs> like, it's like a random ass person that you don't even like barely know. It's like, what the fuck is going on? They're like, calm down. Oh, <laughs> God. Anyway, those are my straight kid moments. I love it. Plenty more where that came from, you guys, but we're back on the recording game and it feels so good. I have to say it again. So Sorry. good. It does feel a little weird with this uh, oh. first time ever virtual recording, but um, we're doing it. I think we're, are we doing okay? Doing are we doing okay, Ben? He, he says, he says, no, Benny Boo -boo? just kidding. He says, yes. let me check my camera just to triple check. Yeah, triple check now. We're going to start our little segment about our actual topic today. Um, we're talking yes. about the art of being alone, but not lonely. And that can fall for a lot of things, you guys, like a lot, a lot of things when we're talking about it. That can mean in a relationship, that can mean alone time, that can mean solo travel. It can mean so many different things. And I felt we felt like it was like so timely being that I'm not in Minnesota. And so if we took some like weeks away from the podcast, too, we were like, holy crap. Why have we not talked about the fact that learning how to love alone time and coming from somebody who packs their schedule like a freak? 
learning how to love alone time will literally change your life. And I can guarantee that through and through because I am proof, like living proof of it. Yes. And I was just going to say, like, we want to talk about this. Yes, because you don't have to necessarily like go, you know, solo travel. You can literally be alone like instances throughout your day. We're going to talk about like ways to practice that and practice being alone without feeling lonely. And obviously there are different meanings alone and lonely. Lonely is like that emotional. You're missing emotional connection. Being alone is like that confident solitude type of feeling. And I think there's definitely ways to talk about this. And it is hard because our world is so concentrated and constructed and built around extroverts. Like to succeed in the Western world is all about people. It's always about people. Your job is about who you know, not what you know. Dating, it's about swiping and going through all these people, meeting all these different people, um, getting all that FOMO feeling if you don't go out with your friends or the squad, um, fear of yeah. missing out all the fucking time. And then we also have social media now where it's like the masses are just, everyone is always with someone and you think that's how you're supposed to do it. And it's not okay to be alone when in reality, like being alone is a luxury. Being alone and bored is even a more luxury. You can be creative. You can like reflect a little bit. So there's just so many things that play into this um, being alone and why it's hard right now. I think one thing to flag too in the beginning is that there's a sign that your body or your mind is probably telling you when you're realizing that alone time is something that you do not enjoy. And I was there, right? I, um, had like severe anxiety that I was for sure not paying attention to. And this is not about mental health right now, but I want to be mindful that like, if you're avoiding alone time and you're always hustling and you're always filling your time with something, it's likely meaning that there is something you need to address in your life. Like seriously sit with it. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the fear for me, especially stemmed, I think in high school and middle school when, um, I was like a bit nerdier, you know, like, I don't know. I had, I had a fear of like not having friends and like a fear of not being liked. And eventually that fear of not being liked actually like insecurely came into my friendships. And then it was a fear of not being invited. So then I felt like I always had to be doing stuff with friends so that I would be on their like mind or on their like list of people to invite. And I feel like that's how mine kind of started spitballing and also anxiety behind that. You know what I mean? That we don't even think about that and spend the time thinking about where the hell did this even start? Like, why am I so worried about being alone? It's definitely like in those like middle school, high school years, for sure. Like that's when I was definitely a little bit more. Um, you know, wanting to be, you know, invited to things. And I think I really came into myself in college. I ended up, I think college was kind of like a new start for me where it was, you didn't have the same people. You felt like, I at least felt like everyone was a little more welcoming, you know, when you went to college. And yeah, I remember loving doing things by myself in college. Like I would go out to yeah. dinners. I would go to coffee shops and study. People would literally want to come with me. And I would be like trying to think of excuses to purposely go by myself. Like I have always loved that feeling. And I remember though, it wasn't always like that. Like in high school and middle school, it was always wanted to be, you know, to the, the fun boy's house that was going to have the trampoline party like I wanted to be invited the trampoline party do you remember those little like get togethers you literally play games like night games and shit yes Um, yeah and I also think it's funny because when you are able to be alone and sit with yourself and feel confident you start to trust yourself more with like decisions and what's interesting is you don't put off that like desperate energy and people are good at reading that like when you are with someone who's like constantly trying to be part of something you just know it like grinds your gears the wrong way and it's like this desperate energy and I think getting that out of the way by purposely not doing those things that you want to do um is actually a huge step in the right direction totally and like the people pleasing aspect of it is like actually by you saying yes to way too many things you're gonna disappoint somebody whether it be the friend that you thought oh i'm telling you i'm probably gonna come because i want to keep your you know my options open and like i really do want to come but the fact of you saying yeah i'll be there and then not coming is actually so much more harmful than it is helpful so that's another piece of like being alone and not lonely that like is I always think of I'm like oh my god I used to commit to 500 things a night thinking I could squeeze everything in so if you said talk about it too of like Sid thinks that she's gonna go you know to the moon and back and then come to dinner and I'm like yeah well you know I might just make it okay Mrs. Tesla rocket ship she shows up two hours later just oh sorry I was somewhere <laughs> 
I was at the moon real quick. No, but I, I read this sentence that I thought was really interesting because it just talks about how like we're talking about FOMO and then we'll talk about all the things that we do to enjoy alone time and all the things. But I thought this was really interesting. So um, research has linked FOMO to feeling disconnected from others and disconnected from one's own life. According to a study published in this human behavior thing, people with a high degree of FOMO feel less competent less um, autonomous, like meaning like go with the flow and less connected in their daily lives than the average person. So like literally, if you have a lot of FOMO and we talked about this yesterday when we were doing some like pre-episode prep, like you actually are really disconnected in yourself. You're so worried about what everybody else is doing rather than being worried about the things that you could get done and the feelings you could get over by being alone and sitting with yourself. Like t think about that because we've all had FOMO and I get it. Like, Someone's on a Cabo trip, FOMO, LOL, like me in a nutshell. But if it's a night out and you're not there because you needed to listen to your body, chill with that. Yeah. Chill with the FOMO. You're fine. What helped me is like, I feel like in, again, like in college, that's when I started to like, no, I don't really want to do anything tonight. Like, and I was so comfortable with that decision because I always ended up. I, you never, this is like, you, you've heard it before. You never regret not going out. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I was like, wait, was that I say backwards? But like everyone's hung over the next day and you're like, oh, like I did self care. Like I had a little glass of wine while I watched my favorite show. I journaled, like I called my mom. It was just like, you never regret it. You do never regret it. The only thing I remember like being sad about was in college where it was like Sunday and everyone gets brunch together and like recalls the night. Like that shit's fun. Like enjoy that here and there, but like just make sure you're still prioritizing, like, you know, not always having to be with someone or going out, especially partying. Like, yeah. Oh my God. When I was starting to learn how to like say no and like not go out and like spend time alone. This is the first flag is people were telling me that I needed to slow down and needed to spend time for myself. Like if somebody else is noticing that you need to slow down, like a friend or a family member that's close to you that you trust, listen, because I should have listened a long time ago and I needed to listen when people were telling me that. When I finally started doing it, I would set an intention to not fill my week. Every day did not get to be filled with things and people. And the other piece is, let's say I was like, you know what? I'm deciding now that Friday night, I'm not going to go out. Well, guess what? Friday night plans came up. I switched it. Then Saturday night, I won't go out. And I'll stay in Friday night. Fine by me, right? But then Saturday night was intentional for something. So I would say like, okay, I'm not going out Saturday night or Friday night or whatever night. Doesn't matter. I intentionally would like to cook a really good meal. I want to have salmon. And then I kind of want to spend an hour reading and an hour watching TV and playing like with Scotty and Mixon, literally my cats, like setting a mental, like quick note of like, okay, I'm going to use this time for this because I know that fills my cup. You feel 20 times better Then it's not about like, well, what am I going to do tonight? If I just sit in and don't do anything, I should have just gone out with my friends. Even better is I heard this, um, on a podcast that that time you just dedicated to be intentionally alone do an intentional phone break too. So like you have two hours oh. where you don't use your phone. Because a lot of times what happens is, oh my God, I don't have time to be alone. Okay, what about the 20 minutes you were on TikTok? What about the 30 minutes you, you know, were reposting True. Instagrams or whatever the hell? So intentional alone time without your phone and you have to be bored. Like being bored is there's a never time to be bored right now. Like we always have so many things to do. We both have to-do lists. There's always constant work that could be done. And I know maybe you're in college and you're like, well, I could get that project done. Maybe you have a job right now. You also have a side hustle. Maybe you, you know, everyone has this constant list of things. And being bored is so rare these days that you don't have time to like think, what do I like? What don't I like? Do I feel like drawing? Like, should I journal? Like, what would you do if you literally didn't have your phone right now or a podcast? Like what, what are you going to do? And I think that leads to a lot of creative ideas. Um, for me, one of the things I like to do, cause I'm really bad at like, okay, I'm just going to like, yeah, put my phone down. Sure. I'm like, Ooh, it rings. Let me look at it. Um, go for walks without a podcast unless it's yes. ours unless it's, you're listening to ours like that's cool no i'm just kidding like actually no but like podcast. if it's your candidate like like literally like go ahead like, but like. Yeah, but like, <laughs> um but nothing no phone no earphones just walk 
and I've come up with like so many good ideas and like thoughts and I've talked about this before. So um, that's one of the things yeah. I like to do. Here's the thing too, is like alone time, like you're saying without anything, as long as it's safe, obviously I should like flag that. Cause like we're walking in safe areas, but obviously be mindful of course. Right. Maybe keep your phone in your back pocket, but don't touch it. You know? Yeah. But like, don't touch it. But like being outside is so important even in winter. Like I know we're like, Oh my God, we're in Minnesota. There's nothing to do. Like if I have alone time, I might as well just sit on my ass and do nothing. Well, actually like, have you ever attempted journaling? Have you ever read an article about that thing that you wanted to learn about and about nutrition that you literally have always said you were going to fucking do and you never did it? What about that 20 minutes that you just said and dedicated for like learning something? And here's learning. what stopped overwhelming me. Yeah. Learning is not a bad thing, people. You got to learn forever. But here's the thing. If you make it about just reading a chapter mindlessly and not like liking it, like that's when you're going to get upset with yourself and be bored as hell. When I make it about like, I've been wondering what the, what else, like what other ways to get protein in my diet are. And I knew, I saw this article by Whitney Simmons and she's like my favorite lady. Like that's something I actually want to spend 20 minutes doing, especially when you batch it in small amounts of time and your alone time, Th this time is for you, honey. You're not forced to do anything. So stop making learning a bad thing and start making it like 20 minutes a day versus like, I need to read for three hours in order to be smart. Uh, no, you don't. And for me, uh, I, I, I'm going to bounce off this learning thing because this was one of the things I had was um, reading. Um, I've switched from like my love story books to something that I can learn. Like right now it's like a lot of self-help books um, that you can learn about. I've been, I read a book about, you know, some like reverse dieting thing because I'm really into like helping women, you know, get their metabolism back and revved up so they're able to lose weight. So I've just like been reading before bed Um and I think that's another good way to learn, especially by yourself. But I wanted to like flag um, living with someone, especially in a small area like I do. I have I have my boyfriend who's living with me and it is one room. I mean, we have a living room, we have a bedroom and we have a bathroom and a kitchen, but it's like all connected. Right. It's, excuse me. Very small. Whoa. <laughs> I was drinking that soda too fast. Um, so for me, it was a really big change because when I was living by myself, I fucking talk to myself all the time. I'm like spending time on the couch or like in the kitchen, just literally being like, Oh, like I need to fluff this pillow. Like I will talk to myself and I'm like in my thoughts out loud and I felt alone a lot. I was able to go home and reflect on the day, reflect on how I was feeling, but living with someone's hard. So Things that I do in my little small condo with a roommate to feel alone is I read after he falls asleep in bed. Like he wears an eye mask because I can't really like focus. I don't feel really alone when he's awake at the moment. So like I literally, yeah. I literally read. And then the other thing I do is I'll say to him, hey, I'm going to put a podcast in and um, clean up a little bit. So like I literally put headphones in. So I'm hearing like either it's like anxiety music, like weird frequencies, or I'm listening to an actual podcast and I'll clean and I'll do my thing. And I literally just feel I can't hear him rustling his paper or working on his computer. It helps me feel I'm like so fucking annoying. No, nah. I You're like feel, shut your fucking self up. Yeah, but I feel like this like sense of self again and like. I'm aware of my body more so of the other person that's there. I love that. I, I like that call out too, because in spaces, like when you have roommates, when you have a roommate that is a boy that sometimes drives you absolutely bananas, roommates especially, like lock yourself in your room. Also know that in no normal roommate situation, are you and your roommate supposed to be attached at the hip? And if you are, you're very lucky to live with your best friend. That's awesome but it's also healthy to do things alone. Like, yes, be independent. When you lock your door and close it for the night and say, no, I'm not going out with you, even though I feel bad because you have no one to go out with, you're not a bitch for doing that. Like take the time to be alone, let it sink in, let yourself have that space and like use it to your advantage. You're not, a, you're not being a bitch or having bad behavior because of that. Like it shouldn't be that standard that you're besties and you go everywhere together. La la la. Um, Honestly, oh, I had a that was oh, so oh. annoying to me when I saw people do that all the time in college. I'm like, do you guys do anything by yourself? And you're like, wait, really? Yeah. I don't think you're happy though. But like also amazing that you have a bestie, of yeah. course, like in your room. But I will say um, one of my most useful like 
times that are specifically for me being alone off my phone are when I'm drinking. And then let me, let me be clear about this. This is not alcohol, but I know everyone's brain was like, is she drinking? Like, no, think about tea. And like when I drink my athletic greens, not an ad, by the way, I just actually love that shit. I, in the morning, it takes me about like five minutes to drink it. And I'll just like sit and like look outside or stand outside or like walk around and just like be in my house in my alone time. It's so dumb. It sounds so stupid, but it's like, I'm clarifying my thoughts as I wake up. When I drink my tea, intentional tea and sid time, tea and S, okay? That's me and my tea and me and only that my tea. I sit on the couch. I maybe go stand outside again. I don't know why I would do that. It's kind of dark outside because I like sleepy time tea, but you know what I'm saying? Sid. Like, come on. It's not weird because I literally wrote down romanticize your coffee time or like whatever so oh, like i love so like in the morning or maybe yeah it's your nighttime tea like make it a fucking thing like put on some good music like light a candle journal maybe plan your day um yeah that's a really good time to be alone so like even if you don't drink coffee like find some ritual in the morning that you can always come back to to sit down where you have to like be present and whether that's tea coffee a glass of water athletic greens maybe it's fucking skincare like I don't know um romanticize it and like for me that's also like going to a grocery store by myself like make it a fucking date with yourself like I love grocery shopping and shopping by myself because I don't want to, anyone to rush me when I'm looking at all the labels in Whole Foods. Like, I want to be like, ooh, new food. Like, I want to stand there for hours if I want to and look at foods, okay? And I don't want anyone telling me to, like, okay, are we leaving soon? So, I don't know. That's something Especially I love doing, Whole Foods. Or Erwan. Oh, my God. Erwan. Were you, did you go? Erwan or, yeah, or Trader Joe's even here. Yes. Like, sorry, but, like, Trader Joe's here is, like, kind of badass. Like, Y'all. I'm like, whoa, what are these snackies? Never seen these before. Do you know what Erwan is, you guys? If you don't, it's yes. literally... Can you explain what it is? Because you're there. It's like a... It's Bougie. Like, I, uh, well, I should say it's like a Whole Foods, but literally everything is like you're going into like a, a four to five star restaurant. Like the, the salmon that you can get to go is like salmon with like a, a, a chi butter or ghee butter, I should say. Like miso glaze. Miso glaze. Like beautiful. And it's like, holy crap. Like that's like the to go little box. You're like, what the, like this face is fancy. It's amazing. It's so expensive though. But I, my first Erwan experience, I don't know how to say it, but was oh, unforgettable. Unforgettable. It's I, unforgettable. I was with, I did a trip with like my ex-boyfriend and we were in Venice and we went to Erwan and he was with me and he was like, okay, it's been like 30 minutes. Let's go. I'm like, okay. We get home and I go, um, okay, I'm going to go back. So I literally went back so I could take my time. Like, oh my God, it was so cool. You're hilarious. Oh, it's so fun funny. though to just like take that time to do things alone. And even the other thing is like, okay, let's say you don't want to be locked up in your home. Who said alone time was like locked up in your home? For me here especially, and I try to do this at home too, is I go to like a neighborhood that I'm not as familiar with. Like for a little while it was Linden Hills in Minnesota. They've got some cute coffee shops like, or like literally boba tea. Sorry, but I love that shit. It doesn't have to be coffee for me. It could be boba tea. It could be anything I can sip on. I don't know why it's, that's I'm like that. But spending the time to get like loosely lost, okay? So intentionally walking from a starting point, maybe drop a pin where your car is, and just wandering and even just looking at the houses, looking at the trees, being outside, it's so grounding because then maybe that night you are gonna go meet up with all your friends. And I'll tell you one thing, listening to when you're overstimulated is the biggest mistake I was making for a really long time. I would go from working my ass off to a happy hour with friends, to hosting people for a game night and my cup was literally 10% full. I couldn't give anybody anything because I wasn't aware that I needed alone time in between. So getting comfortable with that alone time and like actually being like, eh, you know, I'm going to host like 20 people here in a little while. Maybe I should spend the next two hours like slowly getting ready so that I'm not rushed or putting on my skincare without being like, like rubbing into my face faster than I ever have before. Which That's like also why the fuck do I do that? It's like go to move. Like uh, I could just see you getting like, cause whenever we do the podcast, you literally do, will do your makeup here and you're like, oh, okay, here we go. I'm ready. I'm like, it's like uh, I'm programmed to be in a rush or something. And like, yeah. I'm learning how to reverse it. And me that's too. a lot of what this trip is for me too. Honestly, same. I think we can both work on this in 2023. Like just slowing shit down a little bit, but like finding efficiency in 
the yeah. slowness, if that makes sense. I don't know. You know who's like fucking so good at this that I'm like, God, you're so annoying. Who? Jordan. Oh, he, I could see that. I've never met a midday napper and a golfer that literally is more, um, what's the word? If it, well, yeah, I guess efficient. efficient with his time. I'm like, he has time for a nap in the middle of the day. I'm like sitting there like, what the fuck? And then I realized the last like two hours of work, let's say on a Friday, I just wasted my time. I could have been doing something. Nope. I was just writing down my to-do list and walking around thinking about how I didn't want to do with the rest of my emails. When I could have just like did, gone on a walk and then came back like, God, what an idiot. Like, oh my God, so I annoying, feel But that. I'm learning. Yeah, same. We're all learning together. That's all I have for like my little things that I like to do. Um, do you have any more? No, but all I can say is that like you really actually figure out what's important when you slow down and enjoy your alone time. Like I, I think that my friendships make a lot more sense and the things that I put my time into make a lot more sense. And my last comment on that would be that if you're not investing in you and your time with yourself, then you're not investing in the side hustle that you don't have faith that you can start or um, getting emotionally more stable or improving your like relationships personally, yeah. like without having alone time and understanding what those things are, you're not going to make strides forward. And that's why you need to make it a priority. Yes. Yeah. And bouncing off that, like I was reading something about, you know, like even if it's just like going through a day to day, the ordinary yeah. things start to feel like, oh, yeah, like it's mundane. It's repetitive. Like it could be depressing if you think about it like that. Like that's why I crave like change. Like I need to go on a vacation or I need to move or I need to do this. I need to change jobs. I need to change. It's like those people that are always like ADHD, but also like needing a life change every like six months. It's because we forget that like the ordinary is ordinary for a reason and it should be honestly the ordinary is where things are like the most important like a coffee with a friend or like a good conversation with your significant other or like that moment where you were on the hill or in your car watching the sunrise because you were early for work it's like those moments are repetitive and ordinary for a reason not everything has to be crazy exhilarating adrenaline rushing type of changes and events to feel happy yeah. and to feel secure with yourself um absolutely I think like the reason why we're talking about like being alone is like and we talk about the practices it is important to like actually reflect a little bit internally and think about like who you want to be what you like what you dislike um and you'll become more confident in decisions become more confident with your self that energy you put out and like for me I've also noticed like decision wise like with fashion it's even like kind of portrayed into that I feel like now I pick things out because I like them I don't really think about oh is this in or will other people like this I literally get something because I like it you know and I just think that's just one example of so many things that can happen by being confident in your own decisions because you have time to sit alone reflect and feel good I love that. And I was just thinking about how, like, if I didn't take a little bit of alone time, like intentional alone time, I could never piece together what I wanted to get better at. That was like another thing I was thinking about. Like for you, it's like picking out clothes too. And I, I feel that like, I want to get better at that. I also want to get better at just posting to my social media. And I couldn't even, here's the thing is my brain doesn't work. Like, oh yeah, post to social media. And one day you'll make money on your social media, like really good money. It's like my brain goes, I needed to think and sit there and be like, oh, if I put a little more time in my social media, then I'm actually going to be get better at it, which means I'll be a little bit more of a social media expert, which in turn will probably mean there's more opportunities for me down the road. But right in this exact moment, my some of my alone time that I want to dedicate to myself and my own like development is just getting better at posting. Don't think about the later, yeah. think about the right now. But I never wrapped my head around that or like felt something in it until I just sat in it and like was like, why, why would I want to do that in the first place? Like, I don't even care about that because I was moving so fast. I didn't give a hell, you know, fuck it's about like, anything. Sometimes we think about five steps ahead versus like, okay, what can I do right now in this moment? Like being present in the moment is so goddamn hard. Um, but we're getting better at it. Can you tell you we've been going we to therapy? Can you tell we've been going to therapy, you guys? <laughs> can you guys tell? Also, wow, can you this tell is it's such a serious I episode. I love. I know. I kind of love it though. We needed it. Me too. Also, it's humid as fuck here. Oh. Like, look at my hair. If I put my hair down like this, 
Look how humid it is. Oh, oh my gosh. My God. You I, have a lot oh, of hair. Oh. Girl. Yeah, I'm so does. jelly. So jelly. I'm hot, man. I'm hot in this freaking California sun. Um, Do we have anything else we want to say about this topic before we go into our listener straight kind of moment? No, I don't think there's anything else I want to say. All I want to say is that um, there's nothing else I want to say something. All I want to say. <laughs> I know I did that. And I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell is it? All I want to say. No, I'm done. But let me just leave you with this. No, I'm just kidding. But literally, if you're putting, if you have something on your to-do list that you said that you were going to do last year and it came over on your to-do list this year because you want to do it for you and it's going to bring you some self freaking growth, go do it. Stop putting it off from somebody who put it off for like little under 10 years. Do it for you and do it now. Like one of the things that kept me going on this little trip, even though it's like short and it may seem small to a lot of people, it's a big deal for me. And I told my grandma before she passed that I was going to do this for me, not for anybody else. And I did. And that in itself makes me feel like I checked off everything that I've ever like been hanging over my head about what I wanted to do. And it's almost like my, my life has actually changed. And I know that sounds so cheesy, Aww. but it's it's like I can't really explain it other than to put it like that. Oh, that made me teary eyed. That's really? cute. Aww. And I don't want to like add to what you just said because it was so good, but I want to add something. <laughs> um, <laughs> add it. Add well, just because add like it. I feel like traveling is a huge, a huge commitment, especially doing it alone. Like solo traveling is really fun and really cool. And if you have the opportunity, I think you should try it. I think you should do it. Um, a lot of times people wait to go to somewhere that they want to go to because they want to go with someone. Right. Um, don't do that. Like go by yourself. It's the world is dangerous everywhere. I'm telling you that right now. If you're scared because you're going to be alone, be as safe as you can. Obviously carry your phone, make sure you have a portable charger, but like still go to a little weekend trip. Maybe it's a weekend cabin. It doesn't have to be somewhere crazy, but if you wanted to go to like a new country and you don't have anyone to go with, you'll learn so much about yourself. Like do it. Oh my God. And getting out of your comfort zone, at least like one large time a year, I, w- I think is like a good way to put it, is so fucking important. Whether it be literally just giving a presentation at work that's so not like your comfort zone. Or going to or the trying movies. trying workout class that makes you uncomfortable. Yes, or going, going to the, the movies, movies alone. alone. Or going on a trip alone, like getting out of your comfort zone. It is so uncomfortable, but all of a sudden it opens this door up of like, wait, I thought I couldn't do that and I just did that. That's, that is like how you excel and succeed in life. Like, I love the fitness studio aspect I just said. Like, that is huge. I have a, like, it's funny because first timers, I've noticed, always come in pairs. And it's like, Mm -hmm. why? Why aren't people just going alone? Like, some of my favorite things to do was going to a new fitness studio alone. Like, your life literally might be changed because you love this new workout. Like, I, I just think... I think it's funny that people always think they need to come with someone like everyone's cool. Like go by yourself to the new, you know, to your berries workout or your Pilates or to GTX, like go by yourself and you might just love it. Yeah. You might meet people. A great way to meet people too. <sighs> oh. Oh. All right. I have a oh. listener. Listener. <laughs> wow. Sid. Hey. Gotten spicy. Sure. I have a listener straight kind of moment to share this week written in. Um, I don't believe if they want to be anonymous. I don't remember if they want to be anonymous. So I'm just going to keep it anonymous. I'm so excited. This one was like verbatim, like from the straight candid submission. So if you do have a really good one and you're a good writer, even if you're not a good writer, just do your best. Um, shorten your story. But we have straight candid submission entries on our straight candid bio at straight candid podcast on Instagram. Okay. So she says, uh -uh, it's kind of long, but I'll go fast. Me and my boyfriend and another couple stayed up north at a yurt Airbnb this past summer. That's fun. I've always wanted to do that. There was no running water. What's a yurt? It's like a tent type of vibe, um, but like a fancier type of tent. Um, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's like camping. Um, Okay, there was no running water, so by the second night, we were feeling kind of grimy. We thought it would be funny to drive to a lake and take a little bath in it, thinking it would be better than nothing. My friend found a random lake on his phone maps. We drove down some back roads, um, and it was about 8 p.m. It was getting dark by the time we got there, but we were all in awe of how beautiful it was. The boys got in the lake first, and they were shampooing their hair. The water was a little chilly, so... 
It took me and my girlfriend a little while to hop in. Finally, we did, and we were both holding on to our boyfriends in the water. You might say straddling them. This is an important note. About one minute later, I reached down and touched my crotch because I felt something strange. It felt weirdly slicky, slimy, sticky, like there was a leaf or something on it. I rubbed multiple times before my friend yells while running out of the water, there's a leech in my ass. In this moment, I realized that I had just been petting a leech that was trying to latch onto my vagina. I ripped it off and all four of us ran out of the water as fast as we could. We found ourselves fully naked in a circle, too disturbed to move. So they're all just staying in a circle naked, like screaming at each other, all four of them. My boyfriend then informed me that a leech had latched onto his ball sack. So we pulled out our flashlight on our phone and sure enough, he had a small open sore on his left nut. Our friends both oh had leeches in their butt cracks, but we were all but we all know where my leech had ended up. Needless to say, we have never felt more violated by an aquatic animal, and our drive back to the yurt was extremely quiet. On top of that, <laughs> on top of that, my grandpa had passed away earlier the same day. Oh, oh God. Oh I don't know God. why that part was added, but the leech thing is fucking funny. <laughs> no, wait. That was like a turn of events. I know. I was like, wait, do I? Sorry for your passing, but holy shit. What is this leech situation? Ew. First of all, they are gross. They are gross. Talk about being violated. Uh, oh my God. Ah. I'm a, like a, <laughs> uh, an entire sore on a left nut. Oh, that God. sounds painful. Really painful. You know, they're like little, they like suck and they're just basically like a little like suction cup slash like mouth. That's what they are. They're like, yeah, they just like suck no, the blood right out of you. No, so that's you. disgusting. Absolutely not. Oh, God. Not Can my you butt. imagine also how, how close you are to your friends after that? Like just standing naked, having them help you pull a leech off your nutsack? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> so bad. Oh, you guys, we love it. Keep writing those in. We love to read them. So you guys are hilarious. Also, remember that you can always write in if you have any sort of advice that you need or a situation ship that you're like, girls, I need your opinion. We got you. Write that in. We'll we we'll help you with it. There's a different we submission. Got you. There's a different submission yes. for that one. So don't write it in the straight can yes. submission. But OK, well, other than could. that, y'all, I think that's a wrap up. What do you got for your weekend, by the way? So my weekend. Yeah. Like, what am I doing? Um, I'm going to get some drinks with um, my, my girl Taylor and a few people from Barry's on Saturday. Um, I coach Ooh. tomorrow, Sunday. I'm driving my parents to the airport, going to Pat's um, family for dinner, and then maybe hanging with my friend Vanessa because she's back in town. And oh, then in the morning. Hey, I love her. In the morning on Sunday is my alone time. Cute. I like that. Yay. What about you? Okay, I was like, do you want me to tell her no? Yeah, sorry, uh, okay, I meant to ask, but I was you're asking me. No, that's okay, I'm just being funny. She asks in order to answer. That's what I was going to say is those, one of those people where you're like, anyway, ask me. So I'm actually um, going to the castle. No, I'm kidding. I'm like, you know, they literally are like trying to one you up. Um, no, I, tonight I'm going to go get drinks with my girlfriend and her fiance that are in town from Sacramento. Um, and then tomorrow, I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go surfing actually in the morning. I'm going to try it with a rented wetsuit. I've surfed Have you before, ever? but yeah, yeah. I've surfed a few times. I would Fucking not say hard. I'm good, but um, let me say it is so fun to surf. And then I'll probably get sushi that night. And then probably, I think I'm going to go on a solo hike on Sunday and find a new coffee shop. Cause that's like my favorite thing ever to find a new coffee shop. I was just going to ask if you're going to plan to do something like by yourself, like hiking or, and I, yeah. okay, love. Let us know how it goes. But the only thing is, is some of the hikes are a little more aggressive. And like right now they had a lot of water. So it was so slippery that like if I wouldn't have had a friend, I don't know that I could have gotten up the slippery slope by myself. So i mm-hmm. um, going to TBD on that one. But TBD. I miss everybody at home. And I'm so freaking excited that I'm one week away from being home. Yay! And we'll, we'll record back in person. And it's going to be amazing. But thank you to everybody. Like, not that I need to thank anybody, but for being patient with us as we, like, take a little break and come back. Um, Thank you if you're listening right now, especially for just, like, hanging on and sticking around, like, week after week, even when there's a week or two that we've taken off. Like, I know that sounds weird, but it's like, you are the reason we keep going. Without listens, we would not be here. So we appreciate you and we love you. And we're fucking hyped for what's to come. Hyped, hyped. All right. Bye, you guys. See you next week. See ya. Love you guys. Bye. Oh my God, I almost ended the call. I was like, bye, bitch. Oh, I'm like, don't hang up on me, you motherfucker.